What's up guys, it's Fetter from 3D Print SOS. Today, I wanna to tackle the five most frequently asked questions I get about the VoxLab Aquila 3D printer. The price point of this machine and the way that it prints, its print quality is, is amazing. And it seems like this thing is going to be extremely popular amongst first time 3D printer owners. Those people tend to have a lot of questions. And I'm not saying this printer is just for newbies. I've talked to plenty of people that are buying it for farms, that are replacing their Ender 3s, that are replacing Placing their ANET ET4s with this, and it's for good reason. It makes amazing, amazing prints. And it takes just a little bit of tweaking, just a little bit of knowledge to get this thing going right from the box with zero modifications. So I wanna tackle these five questions that I've been writing down because I'm getting them over and over again. All right, so let's see what I got, and let's start with number five. So question number five, why can't I print this STL file? Um, I get that question a surprising amount of times and it's for good reason. You, you end up finding STL files online pretty easily uh, when you search for 3D printing, you find all this cool stuff, you can get things on Thingiverse pretty easily and other websites that just ha that, uh, have these things for free. Um, I heard some people even uh, find Tinkercad and end up making something and then export an STL file and people are putting them onto the SD cards and it's not doing anything. And it's pretty simple. An STL file is a 3D rendering of an object, and your printer doesn't know what to do with it. It wants to it wants to communicate in a thing called G code. Essentially, it's code broken down telling each one of these motors what to do so that it can make that 3D object. And to make that happen, you take your STL and you put it into a slicer, and the slicer can communicate with your printer. So uh, one slicer software that I suggest is Cura. I have a video on that uh, specific to this printer, uh, teaching you how to set it up and how to take STL files and breaking them down with the slicer so that you can talk to your printer. The best example I can make is if you find a JPEG on the internet somewhere and you go to file print for your paper printer that's hooked up to your computer, the little dialog box comes up where you're choosing paper and ink and you're giving it different sizes. That is essentially a slicer for your paper printer. Otherwise, the printer doesn't know what to do with your JPEG. You kind of have to tell it what to do. Same with a slicer for 3D printing. You choose how fast you want it to print, the quality you want it to print, the scale at which you want it to print. You give it all these parameters and it slices your file, your STL file, and breaks it down to a G-code that your printer can understand. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, question number four, and this is a big one. Uh, my print isn't sticking to the bed. Um, I would say in my experience, 99% of the time why uh, the plastic that's coming out of the nozzle is not sticking to the bed is because of leveling. Okay, leveling is a major part of 3D printing and it's not a, uh, a very tall, uh, curve but it is a steep one to get over and once you get over it I guarantee you'll be printing in no time you just have to take your time to learn uh, how to level your bed uh, properly um, using that piece of paper going around the corner a couple times making sure that the bed is nice and hot when you do it making sure that your your springs are a little bit of a past halfway or around halfway um, compressed all the way around when you're setting this thing up up. Don't forget that the limit switch can be moved down a little bit to bring everything a little bit lower so you can get that tension on the springs. Um, another thing that could happen is your bed could be dirty from fingerprints, from you messing with it. Um, make sure that the bed is nice and clean. If you've damaged this uh, um, surface on this print bed, uh, don't be scared to flip that bed. It's a piece of glass. A lot of printers use a regular glass without a coating with zero issues I am one of those people get some isopropyl alcohol to clean everything really really well you don't want any grease from your fingers um, on there another thing you can do is bump up the temperature on the bed by about five degrees and just try it again exactly how you have it set up that might work um, I also hear a lot about glue. Um, I'm partial to glue. I think it's a little bit of a band-aid, but in a pinch or in prints that you absolutely need to stick 100% because they're important, you can use a thin layer of glue stick um, and it will be perfectly fine. It will, it will work. Just make sure that if the print does stick and it, it completes, make sure you wait uh, quite a while until everything is 
pretty much cold before you try to pull that off uh, with glue because it is going to be on there um, uh, pretty good. But yeah, I would say take your time and learn to level the bed. There's lots of videos on leveling beds um, and, and I can't stress enough how important that is. I honestly think that it's the majority of the problems that happen with that is just learning how to level. Um, once you get that down, I think your success rate with Prince is gonna go through the roof, especially with this machine. All right, let's go on to the next question. All right, the next question I get a lot is, uh, what can I do if my print looks sloppy? Um, if your printer is having trouble making circles or squares or just precision, uh, I've seen some prints um, where, where, where things get kind of wavy towards the top, it is most likely that that has something to do with the tension on your belts. Luckily this machine comes with tensioners. On early machines you have to make them yourself or print or, or even on some newer machines you have to pull a lever um, to get them to be tighter, but on, on this machine you have these tensioners make sure that your belts are tight you don't want anything binding whatsoever so just have enough play in them for it to feel like it's tight okay you, like if you can see here I can touch the bottom of that it's having some flex that's not a problem you don't want them to be loose because if they're loose you're going to be skipping you're going to have sloppy prints another reason why your prints might be sloppy is your temperatures are too high I've heard people going all the way up to 240 on these on these things uh, on the hot end and uh, uh, for regular PLA stick to around 200 it's going to be easier for it to be cooled it's going to make uh, the lines layer lines real crisp um, like I mentioned before make sure that your bed is isn't too high of a temperature between 60 70 maybe even 75 um, you can get away with with PLA without too much uh, issue but if you're getting sloppy prints check your belts um, and check your wheels that uh, that are sliding on these extrusions uh, each one of these uh, sets of wheels on the bed uh, on the hot end and on the x-axis are all adjustable you don't want them to be tight to be binding but you don't want them to be loose so take your allen key or not allen key your wrench that's included in the printer and uh, go through and make sure that none of them are loose tightening the belts tightening these things tightening your be bed to make sure it's not moving around is going to get you significantly sharper and crisper prints on to the next question. All right, question number two is how can I print faster without sacrificing too much quality? That is actually a really good question. Um, and all of it has to do with uh, your settings in the slicer. There's obviously just print speed. Uh, on this printer, I suggest sticking to around 50 uh, millimeters per second in, in print speed, but you can go, I've seen, all the way up to 80. You're definitely going to be losing some quality. You're going to get more ringing. Uh, you're going to get a much higher chance for the nozzle to, to strike the part and pop it off the print bed while printing. Um, however, you can go a little bit higher than 50 if you really want to crank out some prints. Uh, some of the other things just off the top of my head are obviously infill infill in your print you can go significantly lower um, in order to increase uh, the speed at which these things print uh, bottom and top layers are something you could potentially reduce depending on the type of print depending on what uh, what you're trying to go for um, Th those are, are the things that are the major factors. There's obviously some, some little tweaks you can make uh, within Cura or within your slicer to get things to go faster. But I think the majority, the biggest ones are infill, the speed at which you're printing at, um, uh, how many walls uh, you're printing. Uh, for a good solid print, you want around four walls, but sometimes you can go to three. Um, and it's not a structural print. Now, when you start going down to two walls, you might start seeing the infill through. I don't suggest going that light, but again, if this is a draft piece, if you need something cranked out really quickly, um, you can uh, set all those uh, things lower uh, to get your printer to go faster. My big suggestion for something like this is to buy the cheapest roll of PLA that you can get your hands on, um, on Amazon or eBay, wherever you, wherever you guys buy your filament. Um, get the cheapest possible one 
and that let make that roll your experimental roll. Um, pick an object like a 2020 cube, something really simple, and uh, uh, print something out in your settings and label on it, write right on it so that you know what your settings are. And uh, experiment. One roll can get you a ton of prints, um, and I think it's worth the 15 to 20 bucks uh, for a roll of PLA just so you can really get to know your printer um, and really get to know um, where where you're you're giving up quality for speed. All right. On to the next one. All right, guys, and the last question is, what are the best upgrades for the printer? I have a feeling I'm gonna disappoint a few of you uh, with this response, but I would say, I would say don't upgrade this thing just yet. Um, the reason why I'm saying this, despite what you can see behind me is the printer's completely covered with upgrades is, through my experience, through upgrades, you get really excited, you start to want to modify these things, they look really cool, you can have all these crazy cool colors. Um, you start to actually make things worse. Um, and this printer is so tidy and neat and small and uh, uh, so figured out because this platform, the Ender platform has been around for so long, it's, it's almost perfected at this point, it, is, uh, it just prints how it is. I think my biggest suggestion is kind of what I said in the previous question is get yourself some cheap, cheap filament, the cheapest you can find. It'll print just fine, believe me. And um, just print with it. Print gifts for people, print stuff for around the house. Um, uh, you know, tinker with some solutions for things that you could easily make out of plastic and, and hone this machine in how it is right now. Things will eventually wear out. Um, for example, one thing that I know for sure is these PTFE um, couplers, not these specifically, but them in general tend to fail. So there are some printed things you can do. For example, uh, my extruder block that's adjustable um, that completely eliminates the PTFE tube. I could see that those type of things being an upgrade later on. However, I, I would suggest you guys learning uh, on this printer, sticking with it how it is. It seems to be printing really consistently and extremely well. I mean, zero layer lines, guys. That's uh, that's rare for something uh, at this price point with zero things done to it. There's no upgrades. So um, it's hard to tell now how long it, this printer will do this for. Uh, I've only had it for about a month, and so far it's been so uh, so refreshing to see. Um, but essentially, I do have some um, things to recommend. For example, a toolbox of some sort, because having your tools next to the printer is an upgrade. Having this thing in arm's reach, having everything close is, is extremely nice. Uh, some of the other things that you might see them uh, in the shot is a uh, knob for your extruder. Uh, that makes it extremely easy to load and unload filament. That would be the first thing I print uh, for a printer as soon as I get it occasionally. Um, because it just makes using it every single day that much easier. Another knob that makes things easier is the Z-Rod. Uh, knob it makes it easy for you to move the print head up and down without dragging anything without touching the greasy um, Rod by itself um, Another upgrade that I can suggest that I don't have done because like I said this thing's printing perfectly fine is those bed springs um, That you can get that are yellow in color most of the time um, That are stiffer than the stock springs. I have them installed in all my other printers um, except for one that has solid uh, mounting but essentially it does make the it does allow you to keep level longer because they are stiffer so once you have it set it tends to go um, it tends to stay in level with that said with these stock springs with this setup I've only leveled this thing twice uh, one time when I first initially set it up and another time uh, when I was moving it to a different table that wasn't perfectly even. Uh, with that said, is if you're having trouble getting this thing sitting on a surface that's uneven, you can print some legs for the printer that get it up off the ground a little bit, off the table a little bit, which gives the fans some more uh, breathing room. Uh, but the main, main part of that is you can have adjustable legs. So if you have an uneven surface, if it's 
not perfect. If it's on some shelf or pieces of wood, you could have this thing still sitting nice and sturdy. Um, and I do have an upgrade, uh, that upgrade available on my Thingiverse along with the extruder um, that I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, so I, I know you guys are probably disappointed. You're probably hoping for a big list of upgrades, but I do honestly think that the biggest upgrade for this printer is you just learning how it works. I know a lot of people are new to this thing, new to 3D printing, and I have a feeling that um, everyone's really excited and it's the, definitely the number one question I get asked uh, outside of the, the, bed, um, the bed leveling issues. So yeah, guys, I think that's it for me. Uh, I appreciate you guys asking questions, uh, giving me great feedback. I love talking to all you guys in the comments. Um, you know, if you have any questions, uh, let's hear it in there. We'll start a conversation. Um, I'm having a lot of fun talking and, and helping everybody. Um, and the, you know, the 3D printing community is a really fun one to be in. Um, so you know, thanks for for keeping that going, and thanks for watching my videos. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. If you guys have suggestions for me, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys there. Till the next one.